Hello and welcome to the Kim Iverson Show. So great to see you here tonight. Some big news over the weekend. The Wall Street Journal, New York Times, and other mainstream media outlets are reporting that COVID likely came from a lab. Oh my, oh my, how the tables have turned. Just another example of supposed journalists for these supposed news outlets claiming outright something is a conspiracy theory without any evidence in either direction. They didn't know it, it didn't come from a lab, yet they asserted it forcefully without asking a single question. The government said it came from bats, and that's that. You should never question your government. That was the message. Now, when any of us with half a brain questioned the idea that it possibly maybe came from a lab, that there was just as little evidence it came from a bat eaten in a wet market, we were demonized as conspiracy theorists. Now, fast forward to today, and suddenly, not only is the mainstream media entertaining the idea the virus came from a lab, they started doing that about a year ago. Now, the actual U.S. government is saying they believe it did. First, the FBI claimed with moderate confidence COVID came from a lab. Now, oddly, the Department of Energy, not sure why they're involved, but nonetheless, the Department of Energy is claiming with lower confidence that COVID came from a lab. Now, why the Department of Energy? Good question. It's still unclear why. The information we're getting is still vague, and quite frankly, I'm suspicious. The timing is convenient. Right when the government wants to demonize China to prepare us for World War III, they suddenly say, hey, this virus came from a Chinese lab. But there's one really big question. Who is really to blame? Well, with us now is Dr. Richard Fleming. He's a physicist, a nuclear cardiologist, an attorney, as if that wasn't enough being a doctor. Uh, he, uh, he also is the author of Is COVID-19 a Bioweapon, a Scientific and Forensic Investigation? Uh, Dr. Fleming, welcome to the show. You must feel a bit vindicated now with this news that's out there and people saying, oh, you're crazy when you un unveiled your book saying, hey, this, is, this came from a lab. Yeah. You know, I think I'm, I'm going to feel vindicated when we get these people in prison for the crimes that they've committed. Up until then, my work's nowhere near done. You know, I'm, I've watched you on, on this and I don't think you're, you're feeling your work's anywhere near done. We have, you know, I think now the opening of recognition in the United States and around the world that, wait a minute, after 38 months, what we've been saying since February and March of 2020, is now being recognized as well maybe that's that's what's going on but that's just the opening of the pandora's box yeah yeah so they they're really being vague right now in their current reports they're saying that the department of energy says with low confidence um, previously the fbi mm -hmm. said with moderate confidence there's still other departments saying we don't believe that it is a lab leak but they're still being very vague mm -hmm. as to why they believe it but you actually laid this out in your book you laid out uh, everything that would lead us to this. So can you give us kind of the Cliff's notes? What is it that happened? And who would you put in jail for this? Well, what happened is beginning in the, in the late 1990s, uh, a lot of research got generated that was paid for by government agencies, including the Department of Defense, USAID, NIH, NIAID, a number of other federal agencies. Um, in the excess of $60 million, which now seems like a drop in the bucket, right? But uh, at that point in time was a substantial amount of money. And the research that was being funneled out of U.S. government agencies and other, other players, other actors that are involved not only with uh, gain-of-function research viruses, but CRISPR technology and genetic vaccines, these are all the same players. Um, and they're all to be held accountable to some degree or another. But we laid out what happened beginning in the late 90s, who got involved, the, the uh, evolution of these viruses. And they say there's viruses because the PCR data shows that there's three separate viruses that were built, paid for, funded research publications showing, patents in the book showing that uh, Anthony Fauci, Collins, Xi Zheng Li, Gates, other individuals, the Department of Defense, all been responsible for, for putting this together for some period of time. Uh, people at Fort Detrick, one of the things that I hadn't spoken out a lot on early at the beginning because I kind of wanted to live to see this day was the fact that Fort Detrick tried to recruit me in 2021 as a physicist to come work at Fort Detrick on viral 
projects funded by NIAID. So they're involved. We know that the Chinese lab in Wuhan was a, a joint venture between France and China. When it was completed in 2018, the Chinese kicked the French out, said, thank you, you've done your job. <laughs> don't, don't let the door hit on the way out, right? Um, <clears throat> so, you know, those are just a few of the names of people that need to be at a minimum in prison. Uh, what they did, independent upon how they want to talk about this, you know, either they sat down and did everything in the lab or they went and they got viruses out of caves and brought them to the lab and manipulated them. That's all a violation of the Biological Weapons Convention Treaty. And that treaty was signed by the United States in 1975. It is also the only treaty that I know of that doesn't have a verification clause. And the United States blocked that. Not, not Russia, not the Ukraine, not France, the United States. We blocked that. So you can verify what was going on. Um, a lot of people think that this type of research is not done in the United States. That's not true. What people have heard is that between 2014 and 2017, research scientists like myself, although I wasn't involved in that at the time, said, wait a minute, there's leaks coming out of labs of gain of function viruses that we know shouldn't be there, the Asian avionic flu. There were smallpox vials that were showing up that shouldn't exist. Um, uh, a lot of people got very, very distressed and the University of Wisconsin and the Netherlands were involved in that. And we kind of honed it down, but then we kind of outsourced it, right? And the people, there were people that were excluded from that limitation and Barrick at North Carolina was one of those people. And as, as was Peter Dazak. And in fact, their names are on those documents that were written. So of course they excluded themselves, which is kind of a monopoly when you think about it. But, you know, they got a lot of taxpayers' dollars. The, the research papers are very clear. Xi Zeng Li in the early 2000s took the most infective protein-120 part of the molecule <clears throat> that causes prion diseases and it's the attachment site. And it's the attachment site for this virus. Everybody talks about the ACE2 receptor. That's the second step. Nobody wants to talk about the first step, which is how this glycoprotein-120 from HIV hooks onto the cell at what's called a sialic acid receptor and then swings it into the ACE2 receptor. In 1994, I presented at American Heart a theory that took me a couple of decades to evolve uh, that said that heart disease and cancer and diabetes is not due to what we think it's due to. It's an inflammation and blood clotting disease or an inflammatory thrombotic disease. That's what causes heart disease, cancer, diabetes, strokes, all of this. And it's our immune system gearing up to something coming into our body that shouldn't be there. Now with HIV, we call that disease AIDS. With SARS-CoV-2, we call that disease COVID, coronavirus disease. And in fact, that's what the Department of Defense uh, spent more than $400,000 sending it to the Ukraine for COVID in November, on November 12th of 2019. And they're denying that, they denied it about a year ago. <clears throat> and the fact checkers came at back and they said, well, the DOD didn't have COVID on there at the time. The DOD changed it and put COVID on in 2020. Except that if you go look at the DOD documents, they didn't change anything in 2020. They gave more than $400,000 to the Ukrainian labs for COVID-19. And, you know, the website, I think I probably sent you that website. And you can go on there um, and just investigate what the U.S. is spending its money on. So we know these people have been involved in the development of these viruses. These viruses got out. Everything looks like it probably was not planned because they panicked, right? They panicked. Um, there's evidence that this these viruses got out of the Wuhan lab and got over to Milan, Italy by August, September of 2019. We know it because people had tissue samples that were collected that showed up positive for the virus. They got panicked. A brand new lab in 2018, in 2019, needed new incinerator equipment and new disposal systems. That was a brand new lab in 2018, state of the art, and now they need more. That suggests they had a problem. 
and the war games that were that were carried out. The streets were barren. People were temperature probe checked at the time. They were told to hand wash months before any of this happened. And and the DOD gives money to the Ukraine on the 12th of November in excess of four hundred thousand dollars. It tells you they knew they had a problem. And instead of coming clean, I, I can make an argument. You know, I've, I've, I've been involved with this system since I got my PhD at age 18, part of a JFK program. We ran these scenarios, these 201 scenarios every week of our life. I have no problem saying maybe they thought they were doing the right thing, but when it gets out, then you come clean. You say, ladies and gentlemen, look, you may or may not understand this. We thought we had to do this, but now we need to protect you. Is that what they did? No, they doubled down, they covered up their lie. You could see it in the emails that went back and forth. You can see it in all the correspondence. You can see it in the way they respond. You take Anthony Fauci, who is, <clears throat> he's had that job since I was at the end of my medical school years, which was 1985. That's when I, when I completed my, my medical college. He, the HIV was out then. I, I knew about Anthony Fauci then. He's been a bureaucrat for that amount of time. And for him to get flustered in front of Senator Dr. Rand Paul when he's lying under oath, because one of the patents that's in the book is the patent that shows that NIAID, Dr. Anthony Fauci, gave money that got a patent. That means they did it because you don't get patents for an idea. You have to prove you've done it. For Ralph Barrick at the University of North Carolina to change the spike protein on coronaviruses. Right now, I'm, I don't know as I feel vindicated because we have a long way to go, but right now, Senator Dr. Rand Paul should not only feel vindicated, he should be calling Anthony Fauci back before Congress as a private citizen. And when he perjures himself, they should put him in that jail that they've got in Congress and hold him until they can put him into a federal jail. And what we're doing right now is a 10letters.org campaign, the number 10 letters, L-E-T-T-R-S dot org, which is a website that people can go to, that they can go on and they can hit build my letter. It asks for their name, their address, their state. Now, if you don't want your name on it, there's a box that says click, remove it but it at least needs that information so we know which governor and which attorney general to send the letter to for you, right? You print that letter off and then you go to the indictment letter and you print it off. It's a six page document that gives information on there showing the crimes these people committed. They built these biological viral weapons and, and they're not at all you know, ashamed of it. Apparently there's an affidavit, there's a, there's a testimony I gave under oath both perjury, if I'm if I lie, and the book for the attorney generals of every state to have, <clears throat> and then you you mail those that letter for indictment and cover letter to both your governor and your attorney general to raise their awareness because for the AGs who want to hold these criminals accountable, they need the support of their constituents to say, "I've got your back," and for the cowards that don't want to do it, they need to be embarrassed and coerced is the only nice way to say it, to do the job that they took an oath to defend people. Because the only people, the only attorneys who can file criminal charges are attorney generals and district attorneys, attorneys like myself. And all the attorneys you hear filing cases out there on all of this that talk about criminal charges, they're not filing criminal suits. We can't, we're regular attorneys. We don't have the power to file criminal charges, but our attorney generals and our district attorneys do. We've got a good four, we, we, we've got about 4,200 letters out so far. We've got several attorney generals that are interested. Somebody on Long Island the other day took the documents in and mailed to all four uh, district attorneys on Long Island, and they're gonna follow them on their TV program once a week and show what progress is being made. It's time to put pressure on the people who have the power to bring criminal charges. The state attorney generals and the district attorneys where you live have the power to take the evidence that I've put together on 10letters.org, not only myself, but Dr. Kevin McCarran, 
one of the world premier neurobiologists and prion disease of the brain experts. And by the way, these prion diseases are also occurring in the heart, amyloidosis of the heart. And if you don't catch that and you treat just for this inflammatory thrombotic myocarditis, you can kill the patient. Um, we have Charles Rixey, who a year and a half ago told me I was a conspiracy theorist. Mr. Rixey is a former instructor for the U.S. military for weapons of mass destruction, who now is a part of the team with documents, he says, to back up my documents. We've got Johanna Deinert, a physician in Germany who's tried desperately to treat people. And we have Andrew Huff on our team, who was the guy at EcoHealth who wrote the, the grants for Dayzac to Fauci to get the monies. He knows what grants he wrote. He knows that they're, they're, they're violations of the law, gain of function research. So we have the evidence on these people to hold them criminally ad, uh, accountable and to indict them. And the, that word indict, I think scares them much more because we're most Americans, I think, believe that there's nothing we can do about it, right? We're, we're powerless to do anything about this. The truth is the exact opposite is true. The truth is these people are afraid that you will take and send those letters in because like every other criminal in the history of the world, they are afraid of being held accountable and every criminal in the world, including Nazi Germany, all the people who thought they were above the law, they all got held accountable. And in this time, we're gonna hold in American courts these criminals, these American criminals accountable so they won't continue doing what they're doing. And I mentioned briefly earlier that we've just scratched the surface of what's going on because three and a half years ago, if you would have told American citizens, we're going to inject you with vaccines that are genetic vaccines, Americans would have said, I think you need to prove to us it's safe. Now, they're rolling up their sleeves for anything. And there are five new vaccines that came out since the end of October. One is for cancer. Now, I don't know if you like the movies, but you should go watch I Am Legend. This is a good time to revisit that. They have a vaccine, a genetic vaccine for cancer. They have one for amyloidosis of the heart that's just been launched. The very disease being produced. Hmm? They have one for cystic fibrosis, they have one for influenza, and they have one for respiratory syncytial virus for kids. <clears throat> There's a good 15 on the platform. And if you look at the World Health Organization documents, they have about 200 to 500 in the wings that they're waiting to start vaccinating people for. And all of these people are connected with gain of function research, genetic vaccines, and CRISPR technology. So a lot of people are saying, you know, one of the theories about why this is now coming out is in order to demonize China. Some people are saying, well, this is a way to go after China because the government could just point at them and say, well, it was a Wuhan lab, they're, they're at fault. This is, you know, they've come out with a peace agreement for Ukraine and Russia. Uh, there have been accusations that China was gonna start supplying Russia with weapons, essentially, pitting them on the opposite side of the West in a world war. I mean, if that's where we're marching into. So what do you make of that? I mean, if they're if they're going to try to put all of this on China, how much is China to blame in your mind if they were the ones that obviously still operated this Wuhan lab, if that's where it came from? We have more than 44 labs that the United States has paid for in the Ukraine. We have labs in the United States, the University of Iowa, University of Wisconsin, University of Nebraska, University of Texas, Galveston, University of North Carolina. We have Fort Detrick. If we want to blame people, we know where the money came from. Wuhan didn't put up the money for doing this. We paid for this research. That doesn't alleviate them from them. Xi Zhang Li is one of the people that we're going to indict. We want China to extradite her to us. CCP, the Chinese people are good people. Number one, let's, let's separate Americans and American government, Chinese people and Chinese government, so that we don't take and go after people 
who didn't do anything wrong. You know, we did this in World War II, right? We put Japanese in the United States who were U.S. citizens who wanted to fight for the United States in, in prisoner of war camps. We, we used a cute term, internment camps. They were prisoner of war camps. So we need to separate people from governments. There are bad people in the United States governments that are responsible for this gain of function research. There are bad people in the Chinese Communist Party and their government responsible for what was going on in the Wuhan lab. And we have bad people like Xi Zeng Li and Ralph Barrick and Peter Daszak and Bill Gates, all of which should be held, and, and, and Helmsley for her work with the CRISPR technology that's associated with all these people. Is there fault for, for all of us? There's fault for a lot of people. We'd better start taking and clean up our own backyard first and quit allowing ourselves to be diverted. I used to refer to this as squirrel phenomenon. You know the dog? Squirrel, 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 squirrel. But they never kept their attention. We need to keep focused on the disease here. And the disease is the gain of function research that the United States of America and other countries <clears throat> paid for, designed, built, and implemented. The symptoms, the vaccines, the medication, the masking, the quarantining, the diversions of war, all of those symptoms. If you go to the doctor, you want the doctor to not treat your symptoms. You want him or her to treat your disease. Mm -hmm. What we're seeing is everybody's focusing on the symptoms while the disease more of the genetic vaccines, more of the gain of function research, more of the CRISPR technology, more of the experimentation on people continues. We better focus on the disease. And I thought we had all gotten this really early on. I know I'm older than you are, but let me, in my era, we were taught if somebody tried to distract you, you should ask a fundamental question. What are they trying to extract, distract me from, right? Because these aren't our friends. These aren't, you know, they didn't do this to us and now they're our friends. They are doing this to manipulate us and to get us to do what they want us to do. <clears throat> if I were Putin and I'm not a fan of the man, nobody should ever misconfuse what I'm saying here. And I saw the United States with bio labs on my back doorstep building God knows what, I'd be a little ticked off and I'd be looking for a way to remedy it. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So before we start trying to blame other countries, I think the United States has enough to take and hold itself accountable. And throughout this pandemic, a question I've gotten from people around the world, scientists, physicians, and just lay people, is what is the United States going to do about this? <clears throat> we still, as of today, remain the shining city on the hill. We're holding on by a threat, quite frankly. But everybody is saying, what are you going to do about it? You know, at the end of World War II, the Nazis and the Germans did not hold Hitler and those people accountable. It was the rest of the world who had to go in and clean up their mess. Let's not give the rest of the world an opportunity to come clean up our mess. Let's do our job. Let's, let's take heed of what President Eisenhower said when he left office. He warned us about a military industrial complex. He talked about it after he left office. <clears throat> My parents and grandparents, and I love them dearly, drop the ball. They did not do their job to heed the warning on the medical military complex, industrial complex in the United States. We have an obligation to the people we care about, whether they're children, grandchildren, friends, neighbors, you name it, to hold these people accountable. And if we drop the ball, if we do not take action, we have nobody to blame but ourselves. And history is already holding us accountable because if the Wall Street Journal can finally put it together after 38 months, do you not see where this is going, people? <clears throat> yeah, now is absolutely. the time. 
to decide what type of person you want to be. I don't care what country you live in, but I'm speaking as an American and my fa my family was here. The Declaration of Independence, two thirds of that are Flemish family documents translated from Flemish to English by Thomas Jefferson. One of my ancestors, Captain Fleming, crossed the Delaware with Roosevelt or with Roosevelt, with Washington, <laughs> with Washington a long time ago. Might as well have been Roosevelt, right? Um, we don't know when to go home, but the reality is you don't go home when there's a job to be done and there's a job to be done. Vindication yeah, is once we've done our job. <clears throat> Well, uh, I mean, you make a great case. Let's hope that the people who are responsible for this are held accountable in one way or another. So uh, definitely, it, it, it's interesting. And we'll see how this all unfolds over the next little while. You know, this is the, the preliminary report that the mainstream media is finally putting out there in the Department of Energy, which is odd uh, that it's that department. And then, you know, we we'll kind of move on and see how, how it goes here in the next little bit. Um, this is definitely not the last we're hearing of this. So... Uh, we'll probably be hearing more and we'll hopefully have you back to talk about it. So, Dr. Richard Fleming, thank you so much for being here. Author of Is COVID-19 a Bioweapon, a Scientific and Forensic Investigation? The answer to that seems to be yes. So, thank you. <laughs> thank you. My pleasure to be here. All right, guys, if you want to feel better about your health, you've got to try Field of Greens. It is a powder that you can mix into water or you can sprinkle it onto food. It is made out of whole fruits and vegetables. They're organic. There's no extracts. They actually select the fruits and vegetables based on what is actually going to be nutritious for you. They're not just throwing all the things in there and saying, oh, look, it's a powder of fruits and vegetables. No, they're actually taking the time to sort through and figure out which fruits and vegetables are going to give you the most out of your for your nutrition. Um, I drink this all the time. And when I'm not drinking it, I actually notice a difference. I actually just had mine recently. I was drinking this earlier today. I really like the lemon lime flavor of Field of Greens. That is my favorite. And when I drink it, I actually, you know, sometimes with green drinks, you might be like, oh, this is really, but it's good for me, so I'm going to do it. But actually, the lemon lime flavor tastes good. And when I drink it, I'm like, all right, I really like this. It tastes like green tea with lemon, and I feel really good drinking it. And I notice it when I don't drink it. I actually notice when I skip a day, and I just feel like I'm not feeling as healthy. I don't have as much energy. I don't sleep as well. There is, you know, some real science to your body wanting to have all the nutrients that it needs in order to run properly. So let Field of Greens help you do this. You can get 15% off your first order by going to fieldofgreens.com and using the promo code KIM. So head over there, fieldofgreens.com, promo code KIM. Get 15% off your first order.